Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad alhamdulillah assalamu alaikum peace be upon all of you I'm addressing an issue that arose a few days ago on the day of Ashura uh, somebody I think uploaded a clip of a part of a longer uh, discussion from a uh, Rehla in 2016 in Turkey which was during the period of the attempted coup in Turkey and Unfortunately, I, I went into an area I think that I really regret, which uh, was uh, uh, speaking about the, um, the, the uh, terrible tragedy in Syria. And I think uh, what troubled me the most was that the, uh, the, the, the clip actually had the title that I was mocking uh, the victims of a horrific, um, just... I think one of the most unjust things that we've seen in our lifetime. So anybody that would suggest that, I, I, I just, it, it was so odious to me. I, I don't know anybody in my family who are not Muslims that would do that. And, and, and so I certainly, being from that family, would never do something like that. Um, I would really ask forgiveness for anybody that uh, misconstrued that or took offense from that because that would never be my intention. And I also want to say that there is in no way that I can determine why things happen. Only God knows. I, I don't know the mind of God and I would never assume that. It's absolutely wrong. We do have a tradition and that tradition, I attempt to always understand uh, the, what is God telling me or what is God uh, addressing uh, because I believe in a God that, that is active in the lives of human beings and in, in the life of this world. And so that, that's always my attempt to understand that. I take full responsibility. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يُنُمَنْ إِلَّا نَفْسَ Whoever finds good, let him uh, thank Allah. And whoever finds other than that, let him blame only himself. So I, I am somebody who the Prophet ﷺ was, we call him an insan al-kamil. He's, he's an impeccable human being. Everybody else uh, is, is uh, a sinner and makes mistakes. Kullukum khata'un wa khayru khata'in at-tawabun. All of you make mistakes, and the best people who make mistakes are people that ask forgiveness. I ask forgiveness at least a hundred times every day for my sins. And um, I also hope that people will overlook any mistakes that I make because that's what I try to do with other people. The religion that I embraced, I, I understood it to be a religion of sitr, of veiling people's faults. I understood it to be a religion of having good opinion of people. I understood it to be a religion of um, looking for excuses for people. I've tried never to call out uh, people and I have immense uh, love and sympathy for uh, the Syrian people who have been egregiously wronged uh, and, and oppressed for a long time. And many of my teachers uh, were Syrians. Sheikh Hisham al-Burhani was one of my primary teachers in the United Arab Emirates when I was studying there as a young man. Uh, Sheikh Khalid al-Ubaisi, Sheikh Nadir al-Shami. Uh, one of my first teacher in Aqidah was uh, Sheikh Anas Abu Murad. Uh, who, who was a uh, wonderful uh, Syrian scholar. So I had many Syrian teachers. Uh, many of them were actually refugees in the UAE from the Hama massacre, and, and I was there during that time. So I remember very much hearing the stories of what happened. And certainly Sheikh Mohammed al Yaqoubi, I, I consider him one of my most important teachers. Uh, and I think he's one of the most extraordinary um, living scholars and revivers of the Isnad tradition. Uh, another thing I just want to say about Zaytuna uh, College, which is a college that I founded with Imam Zaid, who studied in Syria, that in many ways this is actually an extension of Syrian knowledge because every single one of our teachers that teaches here uh, Islam or anything to do with Sira, Hadith, Quran, uh, including our Turkish scholar, are, are scholars that studied, with the exception of one, that studied with Syrian scholars and, and are largely indebted to uh, Syrian scholarship for what they teach and their knowledge. So in many ways, this is an extension of the Syrian uh, Islamic tradition, which to me is one of the most important ones and one that the Prophet praised. The Prophet said, لا تسبوا أهل الشام. 
never cursed the people of Sham, which is greater Syria. And this morning I called a very close friend who's Syrian, who I've known for a really long time, and he's just an extraordinary human being. And I felt the pain in his voice, and it really troubled me. And he said, I have two pains. He said, I have the pain uh, of what you said, and then I have the pain of what's being said about you. So I think that, that sums it up. So I would ask his forgiveness for any pain that I caused him and any pain that I've caused anybody. Our religion is a religion of forgiveness. The Quran says, وَإِذَا مَا غَضِبُوا هُمْ يَغْفِرُونَ If they get angry, they forgive. And this is a quality of our religion. And the idea that I would intentionally cause pain to any Muslim, especially with these open wounds that are now in Kashmir, in, in so many places in our community. And in conclusion, I, I want to say this idea somehow that I would support a tyrant or something that, again, is so odious to me. When a lot of these troubles broke out, I actually uh, translated a poem called that I entitled The Prayer of the Oppressed. It's by Imam uh, Muhammad bin Nasr al-Dara'i. And in the dedication, I said to Rachel Corey, a gentle lamb who resisted the oppressor without hatred or rancor in her heart and paid the ultimate price to Chris Hedges and all those who have, despite its political incorrectness, stood by the Palestinian people in their just cause, to the people of Darfur, to the six million victims of the 21st century Holocaust of the Congo, to the Kashmiris, the Iraqis, the Afghans, the Chechnyans, and every other victim of the many tragic oppressions I have witnessed in my lifetime to victims of oppression everywhere whose only weapon is the power of prayer. This work is humbly dedicated. That's where my sentiments lie. It, it lies with the oppressed, not with the oppressor. And anybody that would suggest otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll meet them on the Qantara. I have nothing other to say about that. Uh, again, I, with really sincere contrition in my heart for any pain that I caused, uh, a, a very dignified and noble people that uh, are going through immense pain along with many other of our Muslim community, uh, including uh, the Yemenis, again, who were many of my teachers were from Yemen. So I, I hope that, uh, that we can spread unity in our community, that we can um, overcome these tribulations. There's a lot of young people that are leaving Islam just because of the confusion. Um, I, I, I really think this vindictiveness and this bitterness uh, and this spirit of vengeance, I think it's something that's, that is really uh, deeply rooted in, in, in a loss of a strong connection with our Lord. And I would hope that people would just see how dangerous this is, especially for our young people. Um, this institution that I'm going to be leaving uh, this world soon enough. I'm at the age that the Prophet was when he left the world. I am 63 lunar years old, and um, this institution is not me. Um, it's not Imam Zaid. It's not Dr. Hatim. We helped establish it, but we're hoping that it will survive and thrive for our community in this country. What people are learning and studying here is amazing. We have amazing teachers. So I would just hope that, that people recognize that I think there are forces out there that would really like to see uh, harm. And I think, unfortunately, there's people that are um, just looking for any uh, mistake that I make. And I will make mistakes. I have made mistakes, which is why we make Toba every day. Uh, and I think... Uh, that's it. I, I, I just, uh, I hope um, people again could find it in their hearts to, um, to just forgive. That's what I feel we need more than anything. I'm, I'm putting up the, um, the essay that I wrote on oppression in this book, The Prayer of the Oppressed. And I really hope that you read it because I, I, it'll give you some insights into my perspective, which I think comes out of a deep intellectual and spiritual tradition uh, of our, of our uh, scholastic community. And so my real hope is that people actually take the time to read it and, and, and just ponder it and think about it and, 
and, and try to see the wisdom in tribulation. Uh, if Allah loves the people, He will try them. So, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.